gotta do, gotta be where God wants me to be. Nothing else matters except for His will and His way. I made up my mind, I will follow Him always to my destiny. Well, good morning and welcome to Woman to Woman with Tammy Tubbs. It's a great day to be alive. I am so grateful to God that he has given me life and life abundantly. Now your life is going to be touched like never before because my phenomenal guest with me, Coach Fanning here, Mississippi State University head coach, women's basketball, and she's going to light the fire under your passion. Join me in welcoming Coach Fanning. Hello and how are you on today? It's a great day and I'm just excited to be with you. Hey man, you are looking fabulous over there in that black and white. You know, black is just exquisite and classic, but you are glowing, I have to tell you well, that. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you for joining me here. I wanna jump right into this because when many viewers see basketball, for us sometimes it's like, Women, men, they're dribbling the ball up and down the court. But for you, you teach it as a life tool with your girls, do you not? Uh, you know, basketball is, um, it's, it's what I do, it's not who I am. Mm -hmm. And I think if you said what's your goal as a coach, it's up to, to really help develop young leaders. And uh, we have them for what, that four or five year period usually. And uh, in that time, we learn a lot from each other but they're maturing into their next phase of their mm -hmm. life and, and uh, hopefully we teach each other, but it's, a, it's about the, the journey and uh, there's a lot more besides the X's and O's and we tell them that up front. If they want to be a part of our program, it's going to be a lot more than just basketball. Oh, wow. So when you're out recruiting, what are you looking for in that ideal athlete? As a student athlete, you know, first of all, you do have to recognize the talent and Amen. the ability. And, and with a team of 15 players, there's going to be different roles. And you have to make sure that you have positions covered, a point guard and, you know, the shooting guard, the small forward, the strong forward, the post players. And, and uh, you know, you have to, to fill those positions. But uh, once you identify the talent, then you follow up academically to make sure that, that what you've seen during the summers or whatever, whoever's made a call to you, that they have the academic uh, qualifications that you need and and then of course do we have the major that they're interested in and a lot of them do change their minds but <laughs> you, you have to make sure that that's on you know in line and and of course who they are um, we've been blessed like our, our most recent graduate this year our senior on the team was Mary Catherine Govero uh -huh. she was the scholar athlete of the year um, she uh, was second team all SEC, which, Wonderful. you know, being a first team all SEC and all American, we've had those players, but to be any part of that all SEC team is a blessing and um, a real credit to their abilities. But more than that is who she was off the court oh. uh, as a person. So if we can identify that student athlete person that's going to represent our university, our community, you, all of us, in a first class manner on and off the court, that's ideally the person that we're mm -hmm. looking for. Oh, wow. So do you find yourself being a mother to these girls as well when they come in? Are you uh, mothering them as far as mentoring them? One of the things that we usually ask their family, and a lot of times, I mean, there's various people that will be very influential in their mm -hmm. decision, but is what do you expect of me as their head coach? And, and I think from the majority of times, especially if it's a mom or a dad that's involved or a very close family member, it's, you know, I, I want you to be an extension of what they've learned here. And, and so we're, we're all a part of that, our entire family. Um, and, and there's a lot of folks that help take care. As a head coach, uh, ultimately, I ha you know, we'll make a lot of decisions. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's not about me. It's about inclusively our entire family. I have a, an associate head coach. Uh, that now happens to be a male. I've had a staff where it's been entirely wow. females, but uh, I have three males that are on staff, two of them that are in a recruiting position uh, and different ages, you know, uh, some of them with families. Our director of basketball operations is married and has a young baby, and mm -hmm. uh, that's a special part of our family. Another female on staff, our administrative assistant is a female. Uh, you have training staff, you have academic services, you have sports information, you have strength coach. So there's a really a lot of folks that come in contact. And our administration, Ms. Carr, uh, oh, wow. Ann's office is always open, our athletics director. So there's going to be a bunch of folks that's going to help influence these young ladies while they're here. And I think the main thing that we want is provide, to provide a tremendous experience, give them every opportunity possible to be successful in the classroom and on the basketball court. Wow, that's phenomenal. I'm just hearing just family, faith, and friends. 
And um, I actually heard from a little birdie that you all actually pray before every game. I was blessed again. I, I, it just the, the first recruiting class that we had, uh, it was Barbara Thomas at the mm -hmm. time, was one of those four young ladies. And uh, she's Barbara Yates now. She and Edward uh, run the Fatherless Child Ministry yes. in, in Columbus. And, um, and now it's the Father's Child, I believe. Uh, but anyways, um, she said, Coach, we've, and this was the class of four, Nitra and Ange and Barbara and mm -hmm. Liz, and they said, Coach, can we pray before practice? Because we've always prayed before games. And this is something when you're in a public setting, public institution, that you have to be a little, you know, careful relative to what you mandate that a team does. And um, so anyways, uh, but that was their idea. And since then it has been a, you know, a really a tradition. And, um, and this year, uh, one of our walk-ons, Candace Foster, mm -hmm. uh, after one of our, it was before our first game, and after our first game said, Coach, can we pray after our game? So we've had several traditions established um, that, that to me are tremendous traditions that have been the idea of the team, mm -hmm. and it's been carried over. So that prayer is very important in terms of how we start things. And I would have to, to say, too, one of the blessings that I've had with Mary Catherine Govero, she's the first player that had ever come to me that said, Coach, can we pray each month oh, wow. uh, and pray for our team and, and for other things, you know, personal. And so that's been such a, I guess, a blessing relative to our relationship the last four years. And, and um, you know, you have these things come through through your life. And, and uh, so a lot of players really have been a big influence on my life. And Hopefully we've we've sort of helped out each other. Oh wow! What has been your most memorable experience as head coach here at Mississippi State University? I, I guess from a basketball perspective is our Sweet Sixteen. Oh yeah. Um, you know, you, we had played back in 2000, I guess, to the finals of the SEC tournament. Played mm -hmm. Tennessee in the finals, and uh, so that had been the furthest that we'd gone in the SEC tournament. And then uh, playing for a championship is what we're about. That's what. Our institution wants to provide is those opportunities and then for us to put it on the line and get there. We've been to the second round of the NCAA several times, mm -hmm. but uh, that Sweet 16 was very important to us. And now getting to the Elite Eight and the Final Four, those are our next goals. Oh, wow. I can see that. I can definitely see that because just listening to you, I'm like, I am really understanding basketball now. <laughs> well, now we, we haven't talked about X's and O's too much, so we have a ways to go, but we're we're getting started. Oh, wow. <laughs> just I, I'm just reflecting back. You started out, was it Tennessee? I was in grad school at the University of Tennessee in 1975, and Title IX sort of kicked in in 76, and I was just blessed to be, what, 21 or 22, and mm -hmm. to become a head coach at UT Chattanooga, where I grew up. Uh, and I was there 11 years, went to Kentucky and was there eight years, and now this is beginning my 17th year at Mississippi State. Oh, wow, experience after experience. I just have one question. Why did you decide to come here to Mississippi? It was an opportunity that was available at the time, and. Um, you know, I, it was just, it was a scenario that that time in my life, you know, I, I thought, what is next? Mm -hmm. And uh, Mississippi State, there was a door that was opened. And, and it's been a blessing because the family here, the community, our church, um, and just the opportunity that the emphasis, I think, that, that as, as women's programs have grown, that the administration has, you know, uh, placed before us, mm -hmm. it was a tremendous opportunity. And now, you know, as we're talking now, we're moving to our new basketball practice facility. And I, I look at, at our locker room renovation in the last, you know, couple of years, and I look at this basketball practice facility, and I think of the last 36 years, and I think of grad school when budgets were $500, and I think of the millions of dollars that are put into our athletic programs today, and I can say that this is probably the first time in those 36 years through those two pieces of facility in our academic center that's here that I've really seen, you know, and, and felt like, hey, women's basketball, you know, we're, we're on, on equal footing here in terms of just opportunities that we have for these young ladies, and, and to have seen that growth take place mm -hmm. in these last 36 years has been phenomenal and the numbers of coaches that are involved now in sports and you know when we started out there was just the one of us and it was uh, you know a, a very very minimal scholarship opportunities and so it's been a it's really been great to be a part of that process to see it grow and then now to be in the situation at Mississippi State that I'm in. Oh wow, that's wonderful. Growth and opportunity, I believe they go hand in hand. Sometimes you have to take on a risk. You never know if you never go. So with that being said, I want to ask you this. You said there was an opportunity available here in Mississippi. Can you look at the camera right now and just speak to those women that are watching, that are debating, should I, should I not? 
My mom would often tell me, if there's an opportunity and God is making provision, go, because you never know. So would you just speak to their hearts of just encourage them to follow their passion and follow their dreams? You know, I think passion is, is the key word uh, that we've just mentioned. And um, whatever we do in life, it needs to be something that we choose, that we get, we're excited every day that we get up to go to work. Uh, I think that you pray it up. God's you know, God's will in our life is for us to pray, to read mm -hmm. His Word, to share with others, um, and that is His will. Uh, then He will open the doors or close the doors. He'll provide those opportunities. So I think that we have to ask Him that, that, um, that our heart is right, mm -hmm. that our intentions are right, that we're real, not plastic, and that that we have a feeling in our heart that when a, an opportunity is there that we know in no uncertain terms that that's what we're supposed to do. And then whatever our role is, I mm -hmm. think, is, is whatever we're given at this time, it is the best thing. And that we give everything that we have to that. If, I, if you say, what do you say to your players? It's to be the best you can be. Um, we're all leaders in whatever we do. Even mm -hmm. though we may not be the boss of something, how we walk out on the floor, how we walk out in the business place, how we represent ourselves, that is leadership. And so we're going to be an encourager to others. And our job, I think, or, or I feel, to be a good leader, you're trying to be the best that you can be on whatever your role is, because it is an important one. Our administrative assistants, our managers, everyone involved with our program, when we cut the championship nets, everybody gets a ring because everybody's so important but follow your passion. Make a commitment to something and then know the timing of that commitment. Once you make a commitment, it may be that it's a six month, it may be that it's a year. I know this from a player standpoint. It takes a couple of years for a, a player to really, unless it's just like the All-American that comes mm -hmm. in, even though that player has to be embraced by tremendous leadership around them. So sometimes we give up on something too quickly Yes, uh, because I, I think it really takes that three or four year period. So when you're a senior in something, after you've been with it three or four years, then you can really sit back and say, okay, first of all, I've really learned mm -hmm. a little bit more about the skill. I know the people better. I know how to interact with them. But I think you've given an extended period of time. But know when to get out of something because most of the time, our decisions do affect others around us, yes. even though it may not be exactly a team. Yes. So you have to give it enough time. And your word um, is so important. Our reputation is all that we have. Yes. You never have a second chance to make a first impression. I think we live up to or down to our expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, you always want to let your reach exceed your grasp. When you achieve one goal, um, then you want to try to reach a little bit higher. If we win a championship, when we get to that point, which we're striving you know, to do, then we want to maintain that, uh, that level of mm -hmm. excellence. And I think in life, what God wants us to be is the best that we can be with what He gave us, regardless of what our role is. And so it's, it's important, though, to understand that when we fall down, then we have to get back up, and we have to know that, you know, failure is only a temporary setback on the road to success. And it's important that we continue to pursue our dreams and our passion. And so we have to expect to be good. And, and what we think about ourselves, uh, we have to believe and be optimistic because if you're thinking negative, then that's what you're going to get. So we have Amen. to think positive. Amen. That's it. Think positive. Listen, you all, I know you're being blessed. I am too. We're going to be right back with Coach Sharon Fanning. God bless you, and I'll see you soon. It can seem hard sometimes.
All right, we're back and I'm so excited and I pray that you are just able and willing to follow your dreams and passions according to what God has spoken in his word. His promises are yea and amen. So what are you asking God to do for you on today? Stir up the gift and talents that are within you. Well, let's just take another journey here with Coach Fanning as she empowers you to follow your dreams. All right, Coach Fanning, we're back. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I found myself just really being like a sponge, absorbing all the wisdom as you were just freely giving to us. Now, let's talk about the game of basketball. How important is rebounding? Well, you know, if you walk in our locker room, you're, you're going to start. Let's start with defense. Okay. And then we have three words up there, defense, rebounding, and shot selection. So we believe that those three things are going to help us win a championship at any level, and then you have the word team. Mm -hmm. Together, everyone achieves more. And then you have play hard, play smart, play together. So if you put that talent together and do those things, then when you walk out of the locker room, you're going to slap that board, and it has SEC and NCAA. And those are the championships that we're striving to win. And if there's a championship in anything that you're doing, you want to be the best you can be. So that's, that's what we want to win. That's right. I love how you said team, T-E-A-M. There's no I in team. Have you found any of your players over the course of your experiences of coaching uh, where you had one individual that wanted to be like the showcase of the team and you had to tell them, no, we're a team. Teamwork wins games. You know, philosophically, we just start out as a staff at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And really, it goes before that with recruiting. Uh, you know, we talk to them about these principles before we're, they're recruited. We want to bring in winners. Mm -hmm. And with that, um, as you mold the team, there, every player that you bring in has been a star at their high school. So there's always an adjustment for any player. Uh, but any staff that you put together, any group that you ever work with, that's just part of molding a team together. Uh, but generally speaking, as you keep to the stats and you keep reemphasizing that defense, rebound, shot selection, and, and uh, you don't, they, we don't want to care who gets the credit mm -hmm. as long as the team's successful. They, uh, it's something that we've bought into, and that's really helped with us being you know, successful through the years. Wonderful. What's a typical day of practice with you like? It depends on the time of the year. Basketball, it's never boring to be mm -hmm. a basketball coach. Okay. And at this time of the year, at noon, 11, whatever, I can come in with you and, and we can have this great chat and, uh, and time together. Uh, if we're in basketball season, we've just finished staff meeting and or finishing it up and we have to be on the floor usually by 12 or 12.30 mm -hmm. and we're practicing. Uh, in the fall, if you start, if you come in the week after classes begin, then you'll start with us about 5 or 5.30 in the morning. Uh, we'll have individual workouts, and we'll do that with groups of three or four up through September the 15th, and then we can selectively have a group of individuals. But you can only have two hours a week with them then mm -hmm. in basketball, but they can be in strength training and conditioning for another six hours. Uh, but when you get to that first week of October, then we go up to 20 hours. Oh, my. And uh, so it really varies depending on the time of the year. Right now in May, uh, the players are at home for a few days, and then they'll be back in summer school here in June, and we'll start camps. And you would get to be at camp with us at 7 a.m. in the morning oh, wow. with a staff meeting. And then camps begin at 8.15 or 8.30 and then usually run through 9 or 10 at night. And then you get to close up the camp store with us and be there till about 11 and then go home and be back in ready again. And then if you stay on through July, you'll leave with us about July 5th. And we'll be in a gym watching games from usually 8 a.m. to about 10 p.m. And we'll be in various places for a 20-day period. And, and then at our coaches' convention down in uh, Jackson with our extravaganza mm -hmm. with our alumni in that six day period whenever we're off in the middle of that and then if you hang around you'll get to take a little bit of a break that first <laughs> week of August and and then all of a sudden it's time the kids are back and you start back with individuals oh, oh my. so it's just a, it's a cycle and uh, it's something that in March we hope that we're in March madness and we hope that we're playing way deep into March and if we uh, when we get to that final four that'll be that first week of April so Anyways, it's, it's, uh, there's a cycle that's there, and uh, a lot of times in April and May, we're trying to work with alumni functions. I played in a golf tournament yesterday uh, with some wonderful alumni down mm -hmm. in Vicksburg and get to do that again Monday in Birmingham. And, and then uh, Memorial Day week, we have our Sandestin meetings, which, is, uh, which would be all of our administration and football, men's basketball, women's basketball coaches meet for a couple of days mm -hmm. and uh, get to play golf also that last day and then have a 
an, a dinner honoring our top male and female student athlete of the year. So that's a very special time. Oh, wow. I love how you said student athletes. Academics to me is always important um, when you're dealing with, I guess, athletes. Because so oftentimes we look at the talent versus the ability, to, as I say, to read, to comprehend, to write. Because even if you don't succeed as an athlete in the WNBA, you always have that degree to fall back on. And speaking of the WNBA, you've actually produced some players, uh, have you not? We, we've had the number one draft pick in the WNBA, the number two draft pick, and then two years ago we had three. Um, the, we have had every player that's played four years for us has gotten a degree. And, Wonderful. and since I've been coaching, that has been... Uh, part of it, but I, that's just an understanding. And the decision that they make on college, just like the decision that anyone listening to this program, as you decide on your educational piece, that's preparing you for where you're going to be 10 or 15 years from now. And we want to make sure and get that right. We want to make sure that a student athlete is preparing because it's not just an education, it's mm -hmm. career planning and job placement that's part uh, of our responsibilities. And so, in fact, one of our former All-Americans, in fact, four-time Kodak All-American, uh, Latoya Thomas, is going to be mm -hmm. working camps this summer. Oh, and we're excited that she's going to be back on campus. That's going to be great. I think Trinity wants to attend that camp. We hope that Trinity comes. <laughs> we have a camp for grades K through 6. Mm -hmm. We have an elite camp for your top you know, high school players. And we have a team camp. We have shootouts involved with that team camp. We have an individual camp position camp, shooting camp, and you can get online with uh, Mississippi State Athletics and go to women's basketball and find out about all those camps. I'm excited just to see her, the interest sparks in her eyes. So many times as mothers, we try to direct our daughters into following our footsteps. And um, just to see her say, I want to play basketball, I'm like, are you serious? So maybe she'll end up like her Aunt Daisy uh, was, you know, one of the star players there at MSU back in the day. You know, we're excited about all the opportunities that the young you know, children have, both on the men's and the women's side of things. The boys and girls now have so many opportunities in so many sports, and, and it's great to see a, a family situation where you're providing an opportunity, not forcing them into it, because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you're not, you can't live your life through your children in That's terms right. of, uh, uh, you know, of what they're going to do. You can't make them do things. They have to have a passion for that, but pri providing that opportunity and teaching and training, though sometimes I I can remember I, I didn't know to really say, okay, I'm going to take piano lessons or mm -hmm. I'm going to play a clarinet. But, you know, providing those opportunities, and, and, and we do have to teach and train and, and encourage and, and sometimes say, let's try this. And mm -hmm. then once they get the hang of it, then sometimes they'll say, okay, this is for me. And sometimes they'll say, no, let's try something else. But that's, I guess that's the blessing of having uh, the individual and everybody's so different. Just find something that they really like and give mm -hmm. them that opportunity and then watch them grow. Wow. What can we find <laughs> you doing on the off season? What do you enjoy now, doing? I don't remember us talking about an off season, <laughs> exactly. You uh, have to find no. time just to relax. When, when graduation uh, hits is when I love to go to the beach. And mm -hmm. my husband, Larry, um, has been so kind to, I guess, be patient with, mm -hmm. with this job and um, the, the time that it takes and watching film and going home at night and him knowing that I'm going to be doing some homework and uh, or on the road trip going recruiting or, uh, you know, all the things that's not just a nine to five. Mm -hmm. Basketball coaching is not a nine to five or eight to five or whatever it is. It's sort of a 24-7. Mm -hmm. if, if there's something you have to run to the hospital with for a child or anything with family problems or, or anything else, you just have to be available. And then you may be in the office at midnight and then back in there at five or you may be on the road. Uh, but Typically, when graduation hits, they're gone in, in May. And so I feel like that I'm not on call as much at that point. So we take a couple of weeks, go to the beach. We have a, a small little, you know, lake house up above Smithville. And, mm -hmm. and that's where we try to go on a, on a weekend that's close enough within an hour or so to, to get away. But really, those two weeks in May... Uh, and then that first week of August, when we get off the road recruiting, yeah. those are the three weeks when you say, where do you really try to, to take some time off? That's, that's when we do that. And sometimes you're working half days. It just depends on uh, scheduling and, and coaches. And, you know, anybody takes a new head position somewhere, you're going to have to hire or, and then getting ready for camps. But um, those are the special times. And then there's two or three days at Christmas uh, that we try to give them off. But usually you're trying to wrap packages and visit everyone <laughs> then. So... I, I would say that May time and that first week of August is the real is the blessing from some time off. Wow. Now, it seems like you're balancing it all, that you have a well-balanced life. Would you agree? 
I, I think you could ask my husband and he would question that at times. I, you, you have to, you try to let go, let go and let God, mm-hmm. uh, letting God drive the bus. Having that balance, you mentioned it earlier, faith, family, and friends, and mm-hmm. starting, starting the day in prayer, starting the day with, with the devotion, ending the day mm-hmm. with the devotion is so important, and, and trying to, to, um, to have a balance and a perspective. And I mentioned earlier, this is what I do, it's not who I am, and I have to really work to control the things that I can control or influence and to plan. I mean, the will to prepare to win is greater than the will to win, so yes. I have to pay the price uh, someone once said, you have to, to pray like it's up to God and then you have to work like it's up to you. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's important that I do that. But once you do that, then you have to let it go. It's like sometimes with your kids, there's only so many things you can do with them mm-hmm. and then you have to let them grow and be who they are and be the best person that they can possibly be. And, um, and, and so that, I, I think that's like a ball game. You, uh, things are never as good as they seem. Things are never as bad as they seem, but somewhere in the middle reality lies. And that's just life. And so you prepare. Uh, you do the very best that you can do. You evaluate it. You try to improve. You want to win every single game. I am a competitor. I was about to I'm, ask I, that I am question. a competitor. I don't If we're playing ping pong, if we're playing whatever it is, I if there's win. a score to be kept, I mean, then, you know, somebody's going to be on the winning end of it. But I'm a competitor and want to win. But you have to have a perspective in in wins and losses. And and you have to be able to know that you've had your best effort and that you've prepared. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you have to be able to let it go and get ready to win the next one. If you're worried about the last one, you can't worry. (laughs) Uh, If you worry, don't pray. And if you pray, don't worry. I love it. We just have to keep on keeping on and find a way to win. How about this? With your competitive spirit, what do you tell your team after a game you felt they should have won? But for somehow, the last seconds of the game, the buzzer said, Eck! and you lose. You know what? Winning, though, is being the best you can be. Mm-hmm. And I try to, to keep it as simple as possible because a kid can worry too much about winning and losing mm-hmm. or about stats, how many points do I get, this, that, and the other. All the stats will fall into place. The wins and losses will fall into place. You can't, you you don't want to, I mean, as a player, you've heard of somebody choking or pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, if you're prepared, then then you're going to be ready to play a game and you're going to feel good about it and you're going to leave it on the floor Mm -hmm. and you're going to become a better finisher as you go through. And so those shots are going to fall. You put yourself in a position to win Mm -hmm. and you relax and you have fun out there. That's when I draw that little smiley face on the board before we go out, and you've had your scouting report, you've watched the film, you've prepared, and then the little arrows around that smiley face, there's four of them, and one is the defense, rebound, shot selection, the team, together I want to achieve more, play hard, play smart, mm-hmm. play together, the SEC and the NCAA, but in the middle of the smiley face is to have fun, and you can't take yourself too seriously or whatever you're doing, you have to be able to relax in order to get into your element. And everyone's hype level is a little bit different, but prepare yourself, be very focused, get in your game routine, and leave it on the floor. And the stats will take care of themselves. Wonderful. Woman to woman, the ball is in your court. Your life is what you make it. Be prepared. If you're always prepared, you'll never have to get ready for the things of life. I have truly enjoyed you, Coach Fanning. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so very much. We're going to come to that camp on this summer, too. Listen, ladies, it's that time once again. Love on yourself. Celebrate you, because if you don't, no one else will. I love you all so very much. Have a God-blessed day, and be a blessing to all of those that you come in contact with. I love you, and I'll see you next Sunday, 7 a.m. God bless. And I- It can seem hard sometimes